Hello, this is Danny. Welcome to a whole other awesome review. Today I'll be reviewing Star Wars on Blu-ray Disc. That's right, Star Wars has finally come to high definition and the definition that it deserves. Oh yeah, yes. All right. So, Happy New Year to everybody out there, and uh, Merry Christmas. And if it's not Christmas or um, New Year's right now and you're watching this later on, uh, well, Happy 2012 in the future. Oh, yeah! Alright, so anyways, let's just hope that mine prediction wasn't real, shall we? Alright, so, let's get on to the review. So, um... My review of Star Wars on Blu-ray disc. So here it is. The cover art is very nice. Now, you know, the case looks exactly the same as the inner case. Alright. So it kind of reminds me of the Alien kind of um, Blu-ray disc set. Where it comes in these little box cases. I mean, cardboard box cases. And I don't really like them because when you take them out, you kind of think that you're going to, like, scratch the disc. I kind of like it better when they come in individual cases. Um, kind of like the Lord of the Rings Blu-ray set. I like that better. Plus, you get a lot, lot less dust on it. Or, like, uh, you know, kind of like the Wizard of Oz set where you got kind of like the cases that you put in and pop out. I mean, those are way easier than this. I don't like trying to get this out of here because I keep thinking I'm going to scratch it so that's kind of a downside but alright so let's get on to the review so what do I think of the Star Wars prequels let's do it alright so Star Wars prequels um, my least favorite movie out of the prequels has to be episode 1 and guess what so it is also George Lucas's least favorite and in fact in the interview uh, with Jon Stewart he actually said, and you can watch this on bonus disc um, three under spoofs, and he actually says that the one movie that he doesn't have in his collection is um, Star Wars Episode One. So even he doesn't like that movie. And let's be honest, it was a pretty terrible movie with Jar Jar Binks and everything. The only cool thing about it has to be uh, the fight with uh, Darth Maul, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi fighting Darth Maul. That, that was pretty sweet. But other than that, not that great but episode two a lot better than uh, episode one and uh yeah and and the transfer of episode one is is horrible i mean they say they didn't sh shoot in hd or whatever and that's why it doesn't look good but i don't really get that because even the originals have better transfers than episode one <laughs> just to be honest with you okay so at the transfer episode one i give it six out of ten not that great it looks really the contrast is really out of whack or whatever. The, the blacks don't look inky or whatever. And um, there seems to be kind of like a really kind of like bright, like ghostly light to it. It, it. It's not a great transfer at all. I don't know what they did to it, but it doesn't look good. So episode two, very good transfer. 10 out of 10 for the sound, 10 out of 10 for the picture. Episode three, 10 out of 10 for the sound. 10 out of 10 for the picture. Now the one thing they did wrong in the prequels is they used a CGI Yoda and that kind of ruined it for me because he doesn't look like the Yoda and the originals and he doesn't look as real. Let's be honest here. It's kind of like what they did with E.T. when they went back and they kind of like uh, well remastered E.T. and made him kind of like CGI in some scenes. It, it doesn't match up good with the original E.T. footage and neither does it in the prequels but luckily thank goodness George Lucas did not go CGI on Yoda in the original woohoo yeah ah that's good Whew. I was worried about that let me tell you about that okay but um I mean I understand why I use the CGI Yoda it's because he wanted to do these awesome action scenes with Yoda and you can't get it with a pup or whatever but I don't think so. I think he could have. And just look at Return of the Jedi. Um, in Return of the Jedi, Jedi, he did something right. He used Ewoks and he made them blink. And he put 
CGI over your eyes to make them blink. That was done well because he used, uh, you know, he used practical effects mixed with CGI effects. And when you mix practical with CGI, you get reality. That is when you do something right. You don't go all CGI out on it. That's when you go wrong. You have to have some reality in the scene to capture the, um, you know, emotion or whatever that's on Yoda's face. You know, when, when he's getting angry or whatever. Or when he's sad. I mean, Yoda looked way more real in the originals and he looked way more pissed off. Especially at uh, Luke Skywalker. And he's way more funny, too. In the originals. So anyways, let, let's talk about um, the originals now. We talked about the prequels. Um, the transfer of uh, the originals, A New Hope, of course, right here. Fantastic transfer. Star Wars had, has never looked this good ever. And I give it a 10 out of 10 for the sound, 10 out of 10 for the picture. Fantastic. Now let's get on to episode 2. Fantastic, 10 out of 10 for the picture, 10 out of 10 for the sound. Now let's get on to uh, Return of the Jedi. Fan freaking tastic. I like what they did in Return of the Jedi. A lot of people don't like that, uh, whatever, you know, Darth Vader goes, No! You know, when that guy dies or whatever. I don't care, okay? Um, the scene still looks fantastic. It did a great job, job of the transfer. The Ewoks have never looked so real. They actually blink in it. And they did a fantastic job of the transfer. Really good sound. And when he goes, no, you know, it sounds way better on the Blu-ray disc than it does on YouTube. When I saw it on YouTube, I was like, what the hell? And then I saw it on, on Blu-ray, I was like, okay, it works. But it's kind of, you got to watch the movie to like, uh, in order to kind of like be like, oh yeah, I get it. It's kind of like episode three. Yeah, he's trying to make a connection there. All right. Maybe he originally wanted that. Whatever. So, you know, at least he didn't, you know go crazy out and, and, and go full out CGI on Jabba the Hutt because there was a couple of scenes and in, in, in where he did go CGI on um, Jabba the Hutt but he didn't go full out CGI on Jabba the Hutt. Thank goodness. Um, he's still Jabba the Hutt in Return of the Jedi. Woohoo, yeah! He didn't mess with that. So, thank goodness. So let's talk about the lead scenes on... Um, it's on the bonus disc, uh, to, uh, I wasn't impressed with the lead scenes, to tell you the truth. They did a terrible job with the transfers on the Blu-ray. Um, what, what they have to do is they have all this old archive arc footage, and has to, uh, go through a machine to clean, uh, the transfers of these, you know, old copies, and they didn't do that. They did that with, uh, the Blu-ray, of course. But they didn't really do that with, um, you know, the, the the footage of the delayed scenes, and you get all this grain, and the sounds not that great, and yeah. But other uh, and but I did like uh, bon uh, bonus disc three. There was a lot of great documentaries, and it, it was pretty cool. And the spoofs were really good. I wish there was a little bit more documentaries, but other than that, it was perfect. And uh, yeah, so I highly suggest getting this Blu-ray. And I hope everybody out there has a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And thank you for watching my videos. And if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Because there will be plenty of reviews in the future. In 2012. Oh yeah. Alright, so. To everybody, everyone out there. Happy New Year. Good night. And Merry Christmas, y'all. And I'll see you, everybody on here sometime in the future so have an awesome night